What's up, buds? Fly High FPV. Uh, I just had a question from my buddy Mamba FPV. He's just got his first 3D printer and he wanted to know what to do to get set up. And I happen to have one machine right here that's not working. So I'm going to uh, give you guys a quick walkthrough on how to get these guys set up so that they'll work right for you. Uh, the first thing that everybody fucks up on, or a lot of people fuck up on, is the base. The, the base needs to be totally level. So make sure it's on a level surface. And then you're gonna come over here and loosen these screws. And you come around on this side and you're gonna loosen these screws. And that's gonna let the legs just go lay flat so that you get a nice level surface. And then you tighten them back up. And then up here, the uprights, same thing. You need to loosen them up, get square up in here, and then tighten them up again so that you know that your, your foundation is square and your house is stable and everything's gonna be good there. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna look at the bed and make sure that there's not any wiggle in here. If I just give it a little wiggle back and forth, this bed is locked on, it's not sliding anywhere. And the reason why is because underneath this bed is all these rollers. See, two rollers over here, and two rollers over here. And the ones on this side have got this concentric nut here. You take one of those crappy uh, wrenches that come with your kit, you can tighten and loosen these up. And what you wanna do is you wanna get it to the point where these don't slide. If I grab a hold of this wheel, it won't just like slide. Same thing down here. These are nice and tight. Concentric nuts are not like normal nuts. A normal nut, if you tighten it, it's just going to get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. This is going to get tighter for a half of the way and then it's going to get looser with the other half and then tighter and then looser. Just going to keep going like that. Tighter and looser. So what you want to do is you want to tighten this thing up until it's so tight that this doesn't want to just move freely anymore. It's like starting to slow down. You can feel the extra grip that shouldn't be there. And then you're going to just back it up a notch. And then you're going to go to the second one back here. Same thing on this roller. You're going to tighten it down until it won't tighten anymore. And then you're going to bring it back just a notch. Get this thing where it moves nice and smoothly. And there's no slippage on the wheels. Uh, up here, here's one that people miss a lot. The screws that go into this plate, and there's this metal plate right here and back here and down here, and there's a matching plate over on this side. The screws that hold this plate in are some of the most important on the entire printer because that's what's going to hold this cross member up and level. If you don't have them really, really tight, what will happen is you'll have this will lag or sag where this end will drop low and then your print's not level anymore. and you're not going to get a good print. So make sure when you're doing the assembly, you take this and you make sure this is perfectly level. This flat part is level across this bar and perfectly straight. And then really, 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 really fucking tight. Uh, same thing on this plate. There's a smooth part right here where you can make sure that they're just perfectly lined up. And then make sure that's really, really, really fucking tight. Um, and then next thing to do is more rollers. You got a roller on the inside here, and around the back here is this coupler. And you can easily use your fingers to bring it up and down. So let's see if I can do this with two hands. I can't, I've only got two hands. And But you're basically gonna roll it up and down with one hand, and then grab the wheel with the other hand and make sure that there, there's no slippage. You can see this thing ain't slipping. It's gonna move the whole head before it slides. So then the same thing over here, you're checking this screw, and making sure there's no slippage. And if there is, you get your little wrench, your little crappy wrench, and you get in there and you tighten that thing up. Uh, once you got those, you got the foundation in place. The next thing is your carriage. The carriage has got some rollers up top and one roller on the bottom. Let me spin around the back. One roller on the bottom here. And same thing, it's got the concentric screw and you wanna make sure it's nice and tight. Uh, if you've got all that in place, the next thing to do is your bed leveling. Uh, I'm not gonna walk you through bed leveling right here, but I recommend post-it note bed leveling. You run a routine, it's gonna bring it down to the corners, and pause and wait for you to get the tension just right. Uh, if you don't have automatic bed leveling, absolutely do post-it bed leveling. Uh, and then the very next thing, the most most important, most overlooked aspect of tuning your 3D printer is E-steps. 
calibrating the extruder to produce a hundred millimeters of filament when you ask for a hundred millimeters of filament and that's not that hard to do you do need to heat the thing up so I'm just gonna preheat up to 220 and we uh, I'm gonna bring it up just so my nozzle is not sitting right on the bed as it heats up and you need to do is pop this guy loose And then once you've got it loose, all you got to do is go in here and cut it. Tell it to extrude 100 millimeters of filament. You go down here. You'll extrude 100 millimeters of filament. It'll come out. You'll measure out exactly how many millimeters you got. And then you're going to have to do a little bit of math. You go to configuration, advanced, and steps. And then E steps. This is the most important spot. This one's already tuned in because I am really, really big on this. But again, you're just gonna take your snips, snip that thing off, crank out 100 millimeters, and measure it. And then you're gonna say, take your calculator, and you say that was 105.7. So you're gonna say 105.7 times 100 divided by whatever the measurement here was. Because say I only got 90 millimeters. So then you're going to take the new number and put it into e steps calibration and save it. And then you're going to ask for another 100 millimeters. And then you keep doing that until you get exactly 100. Being able to get your e steps right is so important because that's going to control how much plastic is squirted out. It's like the most important factor on your printer. Besides having it all squared up and snugged away and tight so that it's not loose and wobbling. Uh, getting uh getting those e-steps calculated is is right up there at the top mm -hmm. and it's so easily overlooked because people don't know what e-steps are and it seems scary uh but i'm telling you it's not it's easy to do and uh just make sure you got a good base to get started on and uh jump right in 3d print your hard outs once you've got your printer set up people always say like what do i print first what's the first thing i should start printing dave well it's not TPU parts for your drone. Uh, I love printing TPU. It's my specialty. But really, if you want to print TPU, you need a, a good quality extruder. And for me, I upgraded the CME CNC Easy R extruders to make that happen. Uh, but I recommend everybody start printing PLA. Learn to print on PLA. It's easy. It prints easily. It's at lower temperatures. It's more forgiving. It's not so... Uh, uh, sensitive to water so you don't need tubs and vacuum bags and all that stuff to to print it correctly you can just print it right out of your machine and then uh, get like a roll or two of PLA and just start printing basic stuff print some stuff that you need for your printer like uh, one of these roll clamps and uh, this little tiny bracket here that allows you to put your clamp right onto uh, your extrusion rails so that uh, instead of having your rail up here and sticking up off the top and then having to come down at a weird angle to get into your extruder, you can just feed right directly off the top of the roll into the extruder. Uh, little things like that. Uh, this is a, a part that I designed early on. It just allows you to get your screen completely vertical on the Ender 3. Uh, you can see how useful that is for a guy like me because mine's not just sitting on a desk. They're going straight up. Uh, but yeah, get you get you some confidence in printing some PLA. Get get good at it. Learn how to troubleshoot. Make sure you can get your bed level. Uh, get that stuff going, and then uh, upgrade your extruder if you haven't already. Get a good quality extruder, and then start printing TPU. And of course, when you get that new extruder, don't forget to uh, upgrade your e-steps. Most important factor in your printer if you want to tune things out. Uh, otherwise, just hit me up. Let me know if you need anything. I'm Fly High FPV. I got all the best prints. And uh, if this is too complicated for you, uh, don't worry about it. I got you, man. I'll print all this stuff for you. I've already done the research. I already know what to do to make your prints as strong as possible. And uh, I do all the design work, too. Uh, hit me up, flyhighfpv.com.